Uh, without too much further ado, I can tell you that Jerry is a certified economic developer, which is a prestigious award. It gets you really high pay most places. Uh, and so without too much further ado, because you didn't come here to hear me, I'd like to bring up Jerry Malott. And I'd like to give Jerry a plaque from Clay County in this blue box that I can't get out. I'll hold this. <laughs> yeah, <thank laughs> Here, Jerry, from us to you with love. Thank you so much. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> and secondly, this is, we know you play golf. This is a Clay County Economic Development Corporation golf shirt. Very good. Good word. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jerry. Down here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Jerry, and uh, I appreciate all of you being here. I, I tell you, I'm I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, I moved here in January of 1994, a little over 24 years ago, from Tampa. Now I grew up in Wichita. Spent really still most of my life there. But I uh, spent a couple of years in Tampa, and um, I, I frankly got this call from a recruiter and uh, about coming up to Jacksonville, and uh, I, I said, why would I do that? I'm in Tampa, Florida, and uh, it's twice the size and whatever. And it took a little while, but they finally convinced me to come up and take a look around. And what blew me away, pardon me? Oh, put, oh I don't need this. Is that what you're saying? All right. Very good. I hope, I'm, I hope we're not uh, getting feedback either. Uh, but what shocked me was to come up here and look around, meet people, and realize, wow, there's so much going on up here, but nobody knows about it. Oh, you want me to go ahead and hand that back? <laughs> uh, and what, what surprised me again was in Tampa, when we would think of our competitors, the Jacksonville area, Northeast Florida, wasn't even on the list. I mean, we, we didn't see a company have uh, this area on the list one in 10 times. So we didn't think of it in a competition way. And what I realized was it's only because nobody knows about it. So right as I was um, coming here, the NFL awarded uh, the 30th franchise here. And boy, I knew that was going to change everything and make it really exciting. And, and it really has. And my first charge was, in fact, to, to think regionally. We, we had set up the Tampa Bay Partnership down there in a place where people do not work well together. I, I tell you, no one seemed to trust anybody. This is 25 years ago, six years ago now, when that, that process was going through. Uh, and I just couldn't understand it. But it was a historical thing, actually. Pinellas and Hillsborough counties actually used to be one county. And 100 and some years ago, they divided because they, they were not getting along very well. So coming up here uh, was so different. Uh, and before, before we could even launch an initiative to do that, Clay County, Jerry, you all may remember Orrin Pass and other leaders here came and said, listen, we hear what you want to do. We want to be first in. We really do understand that we're all just one economic region. And if we can work together, we can do so much better together. And in doing what we did, and pulling all of the counties together, and, and in a way where everybody really did work together, and, and it showed with our clients and others, we truly did become a model in the state and the nation. I still hear about it all over. I wish we could work together the way you guys do from different parts of our, of our state uh, and our nation. Um, but I can tell you right off the bat, that first big deal made all the difference. I would love to take credit for, for lots of different things, but here's what made the difference. We got put on the map the day the NFL picked us, our region, Jacksonville, to be the 30th franchise. It was like putting up billboards all across the country. We're now going to be in the newspaper every day uh, in, in the sports section. But because they picked us, we were in a lot of different parts of the, uh, of the newspaper. And, and it's like, why did the NFL pick this area? We better take a look because there's something going on there that we might want to be a part of. And I'll tell you, uh, business was booming. Wayne Weaver was the perfect first owner because in that league of just a relatively few owners of NFL teams, it's a, it, it's 
thin air, but they all liked Wayne. He had such a great personality and was able to win over those. And we had many other issues that were part of the process of, of being of qualifying to do it. But I think their appreciation of Wayne was, was so important. And we started winning right away. Now, this was another big shock. You know, in the first five years, we went to the AFC Championship, the same thing we did last year, um, twice in the first five years. That also added this momentum that there was something really special going on in this area and, and brought us lots uh, of opportunity. Um, I, I remember realizing that in, in a month during those really heady years from about 94 to 2000, we were doing more in a month here than in Wichita we were doing in a year. And I thought we were doing pretty good in Wichita. But it, but it was so exciting because all of a sudden we were, we were unveiled uh, to the world. We're still not unveiled enough. We all feel like we're still not well enough known. But, but it was the Jaguars that allowed us uh, to get there. And then, you know, after that period of time, and what I'm going to do, by the way, is kind of ramble over the years and what I kind of have seen, what I appreciated, and, and you know, just my, my thoughts on it. So Wayne was a great owner and invested so much in our community, particularly in philanthropic ways, and set the bar so much higher for others to be able to in invest in people, in our community, and in various causes. Then he sold the team to Shad Khan, and Shad was the perfect second owner. Shad saw a different vision of our world, not just our city and not just the NFL and whatever. And so he came here and said, we can be so much more globally, not just locally. And he started investing in different ways. Uh, fairly quickly, he decided that you know we ought to be playing in London every year, and not just playing, but being the home team. And the reason was, first and foremost, because it doubled the income of a game that you'd play in London that the Jaguars could get here. But it was much more than that to him. He came and said, listen, we need to do missions every year to London because we want to develop those relationships with companies and draw more business here. And we've been doing that, and he participates, and, and we've had over a 1,000 jobs that have come directly related to our, our investments in London. And, and Shad has 50 plants around the world. He's always thinking so big and, and, and uh, so much. So he came back also and said, well, how can we make this small market, that's the challenge, uh, the, the population base in our region, how can we make it still work for the Jaguars? Well, it'll work for the Jaguars if our communities grow and develop more. So he, he's been involved in attracting business, but he said, well, one of the ways to do that, we've got to make our stadium more attractive and we've got to help the community grow. So, of course, he built the largest video boards in the world. That still blows me away that our video boards on each end of the stadium are longer than the football field. I didn't think that was possible, but, uh, but he did and put swimming pools in and has built the uh, amphitheater and <clears throat> will soon build an entertainment center and some other things. So I think that not only has been great for us, but the two owners have been so important uh, to us as well. Well, another thing that was really important to Clay County was uh, a project that happened uh, about the year 2000, and it's a project that we didn't get. We were working with Mercedes to uh, have a sprinter plant built at Cecil Commerce Center, and uh, it was a great site right on the interstate. It got down to three communities, Charleston, Savannah, and us, and we promised that we would build a high-speed interchange off of I-10 into Cecil. And if it could happen, it could start the what we call the Outer Beltway at the time. But we didn't get the project, maybe because we had to build that interchange and nothing usually works on time. But whether it did or didn't, we went back to uh, uh, Mayor John Delaney and to Governor Jeb Bush and said, listen, this is just too important for our whole state. We've got the biggest industrial park in the state. Uh, we've got the opportunity to build an Outer Beltway that will affect development all through the area. Fortunately, they both saw the picture and said, let's do it. And, um, and so, and, and we did. Now, it took about seven years, not the two and a half years we told Mercedes we could do it in, and probably could have if we had to. But, uh, but it became a priority that has, that has and will forever change our region, as you all know, and you were talking about uh, uh, earlier in the way. Now, we had talked about the Outer Beltway for a long time, but this project allowed us to force, as it were, the, co the financial commitments to go ahead and get it done, and the rest is history, because once that was done, it started it, and, and it will continue around uh, until it's completed. Um, 
Cecil itself, in my mind, uh, got off to a slow start, but has been a, a sure success as it's gone along. The reason it took a while was the infrastructure didn't fit moving from a military facility to an industrial park. It took tremendous water, sewer, uh, and electrical development. Uh, it took more roads. It meant demolishing some buildings, doing so many things that a lot of people didn't get to see, but it was critical for it to be a success. And, and it then, after that, uh, those number of seven or eight years uh, went by and where it was really ready, we've seen the likes of um, Ridgestone Firestone, the first building, a million square foot, GE Oil and Gas, half million square foot deal, uh, SAP, the French uh, lithium ion battery company, um, uh, Amazon, uh, now another million square foot deal with Amazon at, at Cecil, FedEx, uh, Ground, Flightstar, and others. It, it really has gained the momentum. There are thousands of people working out there. And the interesting part to me is I know that many of those thousands of people working there are from Clay County. There is such a close relationship between Cecil and Clay. And it's, and it's, it's been uh, a really great thing for, for both sides of that equation. Uh, Clay has so much talent here. Uh, as you all know, more than 65%, I think, of the people here that work end up going outside the county, many to Duval, uh, to work. But, uh, but a lot of jobs have been provided, and a lot of companies have been able to be attracted because the talent pool here in Clay was able to play such a, a key role in that. Uh, and, and Clay has developed so beautifully as well. Uh, you know, everybody I know that lives here loves living here. Kathy Chambers on our team uh, uh, lives out here and um, actually is now in her second home as she's kind of uh, moved it up a little bit and uh, just uh, speaks volumes about it. And there have been some good projects here with Clay too, uh, formerly Bell South and AT&T projects, Enhanced Recovery, HCA, First Coast Service Options, and some others. Um, and I'll tell you what's really important, and, and again, part of what I was so impressed with is the uh, business and governmental leadership in this county. Uh, it has been so impressive and so important to be able to do the things that we have done collectively over the years, not just here in Clay County, but representing the region as a whole. And, um, and, and it's, it's meant a lot. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I asked our team to, to give me some numbers. So I've been here uh, again since 1994. This really surprised me. Um, since I came here, we, Clay has grown 98,000 people. That, that is 82% population growth. The workforce has grown by 42,800, about a 70% growth. And the big one was the property tax has grown in value. The property tax, uh, taxable property, from 5.6 billion. Now, this is from the year 2000. I didn't have 1994. 5.6 billion to 9.9 .9 billion of value of property. And if that isn't success, I don't know what is, because that really helps provide the resources for the county to do the things they need to do and uh, build roads, do, have the quality of life that, uh, that you need to have. That being said, I'm really disappointed we haven't been able to do more in Clay County. And I and Jerry and I have talked to this and others, and Bill, um, the, the, the talent here uh, and the resources that you have here really should have brought more opportunities, but there are these magnets that occur. Companies don't like to take risks. This is, well, I'll tell you, tell them about that in a minute, Jerry. But, uh, but uh, so when the JTB corridor developed and, and others, uh, getting companies to make a decision to go where there's more talent, but there are fewer um, uh, centers of influence um, has, has been difficult, but I think we're going to get there. And, and one of the ways we'll get there is the development of the, um, uh, of the first coast expressway. Um, well, I'm, I'll get, I'm, so I'm going to switch for just a second here and, uh, and talk about some other events. Um, 2003 was a really big year for our region. And that was the year that CSX moved its headquarters from Richmond, Virginia to Jacksonville. Uh, now, it had most of its employees already here, but the, the headquarters was not. There were still a couple hundred people up in Richmond running the company. But the chairman at that time, who ultimately became our Secretary of the Treasury, just didn't want to leave Richmond. But when he went to do that, the, the headquarters uh, was able to move down. Also during that year, we worked with Fidelity National Financial in Santa Barbara, California, to move their corporate headquarters to Jacksonville. Um, it was. It blew me away that it happened and that it happened so quickly. A guy named Bill Foley, 
who uh, is still the chairman of, of FNF, um, said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. And he had several different requests, starting with that his son needed to get into bowls. <laughs> <I still, laughs> we didn't know anything, but we just said, sure, that one's done. Check that one off, you know. He said, I have to find a house that my wife would really love. And we're sitting here with Tom Petway at lunch. And Tom says, well, you can buy my house. Now, there are four of us at dinner, uh, actually. I'm thinking, yeah, like, that's going to happen. That, that just wouldn't occur. Guess what? Bill Foley bought Tom Petway's home on the river about a, a mile and a half from downtown because Tom was building a house on the ocean. Our next meeting with Bill was with his executive team in that house uh, where, they could uh, where they could tour it, and uh, he bought that one, he bought the one next to it, tore it down, built another guest house. But uh, that, that was a pretty phenomenal deal. But what was great about it was we didn't just get Fidelity National Financial, they broke themselves into two different companies, FIS, Fidelity Information Services, and now we had two Fortune 500 companies and they've gone on, they, they employ collectively, the two companies, about 80,000 people around the world. It's, they're, they're really major, major entities um, in our community. Um, so another, so that was a great year that's, that's paid dividends all the way along. Another thing that happened that was just really critical, well, not critical, it was a great opportunity for us, was to host a Super Bowl. So we... We got that opportunity about four or five years in advance of our 2005 Super Bowl. And it brought, again, so much attention uh, to our area. And, and things were booming. So when I look back, there have been three boom times while I've been here and two recession times. The first boom occurred from 94 to about the year 2000. Do you all remember the dot-com boom and Y2K? That name sound familiar? We thought the world was going to end on January 1st, the year 2000, because we didn't think computers had been uh, developed enough. And so people spent billions and billions of dollars preparing for this, and basically nothing happened. Uh, maybe it's because they were all prepared, or maybe it wasn't going to happen. I'm not sure. But at any rate, nothing did happen. So that was a really a boom period. Well, that was followed almost immediately by the dot-com bust and by 9-11, both of which caused about a three-year recession uh, during those early uh, 2000s. Uh, but then we, we got the signal for, our, for the Super Bowl. Things were getting back on track, and in fact, we just had a, an incredible period of growth time, uh, leading right up and through the time we hosted the Super Bowl there. Uh, it was a time that was so important to us, uh, and at the same time, we didn't take full advantage of it, because I think a little bit about the fact that um, the recession, the, the Great Recession, started just a couple years after that, and we could feel it coming, in fact, uh, leading into that. So, uh, so um, we didn't get to fully uh, anticipate or, or utilize that growth period. In fact, Jerry Agresti uh, had called me and said, hey, can we talk about it? So I'm thinking about building some spec buildings in Clay County, and I want to know whether you think we could fill those buildings. So we sat down and went through, and I said, Jerry, uh, this is gold. You can't miss with this deal. I was wrong, uh, and I was wrong because I didn't know the Great Recession was coming. So by the time he got them built, we are in a really tough period, and, and Jerry had to probably uh, manage his way through that process. But today, the good news is even the Chamber and the EDC are in your buildings, and, uh, um, and hopefully they have ultimately been very successful for you. But it was a, an important move because one of the most difficult parts of getting development in Clay and all the other counties around Duval is the availability of existing buildings. Most companies want to move quickly. They don't want to wait to build a building for them because by the time they've decided they want to do it, they're in a hurry. And so uh, that, that was important, and I was so happy that you, uh, that you did that, uh, Jerry. Um, the, but leading up into before that recession, too, downtown Jacksonville, which, which has just never gained the traction we needed it to, started really gaining that traction and we had we, we had a dozen really large projects scheduled to go some of them did get done the majority of them got caught when the recession began uh, to go and they the financing was pulled or the developer just felt like it wasn't the right time so we're still waiting we're now in we're now in the third boom and it's booming uh, as you know everywhere it's hard to find people we were just talking about that uh, earlier our, our unemployment rate is really at zero when you think of we're at full employment. There's always going to be some level of, of turnover, but uh, uh, if you're not doing well today, um, 
you better look at your business model because you ought to be doing well uh, right now in this in this period of time. Um, and we're back to the point where I look to downtown Jacksonville and believe it is going to happen. Now, now, no downtown occurs just like that. It, it's always, uh, you know, uh, a period of, I remember Greenville saying, ours was an overnight miracle that took 20 years to be overnight. And, and But I think we're on a track now to see downtown really grow and develop. And some great things are happening. Shad Khan is doing some of those, uh, Peter Rummel and others. And, and I really think we are going to get to the point. But we're lagging everybody else uh, by way too much. And, and certainly the the impact of having a town center, which sort of became a new downtown. And, uh, and it, it's a fabulous place, but it draws uh, opportunities away. The JTB quarter, very successful, but it but it also impacts uh, where employers go and, and has made a difference. And by the way, Warren Buffett made a comment. So we're, we're in this, this third big boom at, at, during this period that I've been here. Um, so we all wonder, and you'll see an article every other day or so, you know, when's the next recession coming? It will happen sometime. But I love that Warren Buffett said, in his mind, we're in the sixth inning of our boom. So we've got a few more years left to, uh, to experience this and get the most out of it that we can. And hopefully we won't see the kind of thing in the, that came from the Great Recession, but more, more the modest recessions we've seen in the past. Well, again, when I think back to uh, accomplishments just in general, it's, it's less about the companies and more about things that have. Our regional partnership, really important and I think has made a big difference. Um, the team that we've had at Jack's USA over the years and that we have today, really incredible people that I've had the chance to work with and have helped, helped us be so successful. The reputation of our region is dynamic and it, I, I hear this all the time around the country and outside the country that uh, the people have now heard of us, we're not a secret. We still need more recognition in the sense of people really fully knowing us because too many clients still come here and say, no, I've never been here before, but I'm blown away. If you can get them here, uh, it, it blows them away. So that, that's a good thing. And, and last, the internationalization of our region, I think, has been a really important thing. You know, there just weren't many international companies here, but uh, just some of the things. Do you all know that during this period of time, BMW, Mercedes, VW, Volvo, Southeast Toyota expanded, a company from Japan called NK that makes wheels have come here. That's all just in the automotive sector. And then, you know, Embraer from Brazil is building airplanes out of JIA. Uh, Deutsche Bank from Germany has 2,000 people doing all sorts of financial uh, activities here. Uh, Macquarie from Australia uh, has put a new facility and already gone through their first expansion, and I know they're going to keep that up and going. And we had two of our First ever Chinese companies just in the last couple of years. Uh, Hans Mill, that happens to relate to the name of the gentleman who, who brought it here. And more recently, you've probably been reading about Jinko Solar, a, a Chinese, the largest manufacturer of solar panels in the world that, that picked us. And one of the most difficult things I think I've ever been through, it's not easy when you have a very different culture, a very different language, and then our countries are fighting on tariffs and nobody knows what the rules are going to be. It was really going to be a much larger project, uh, but when the rules couldn't be decided on between the U.S. and China, they had to scale it down, but I think we're going to see it grow, uh, grow dramatically uh, over the years. But, but being an international city is, a, uh, is important and has made a, I, I think, made a huge difference to us. Uh, another, uh, another thing, and I, uh, I'll try to respect your time, is to realize how much we have matured as a re region as well with so many other different kind of projects. I mean, town center I mentioned before, I can't tell you how many people were saying, can't we get a Nordstrom's here a long time ago? We did. In fact, we had worked with Nordstrom's. We thought we were going to get them right before 9-11. They visited and thought everything was great in August of 2001. And a month later, the, that decision changed. But later on, we were able to get them back. Ikea, another place that people have said, can't we ever qualify for that? And we finally have our Ikea. And Top Golf, and the iFly, which is a new entertainment center coming where you can go parachuting without risking your life. Um, sports teams, we have so many new sports teams. Indoor uh, basket, I mean, indoor football, uh, uh, a, a professional basketball, soccer, hockey, so many things. 
Um, the Thrasher Horn Center, uh, what a beautiful and incredible asset this has been, not just to Clay County, but to our entire region. The Amphitheater uh, downtown, drawing more and more entertainment uh, to the region to match with what St. Augustine is doing and you're doing here as well. And restaurants, we had a dearth of restaurants back in 1994. I remember thinking, it's just hard to find a great place to eat. Today, there are phenomenal places to eat. The district that's, that's going to be built in on the south bank of downtown and the new Jags Entertainment District and the shipyards. All of these things are part of what is the maturing of our region, making it an even more incredible place to live uh, and do things. So um, I can still tell you, why do, com why do companies come here and why will they? Because we have such a great environment, great quality of life, low taxes, very moderate cost of doing business here, supportive governments, and young people. Have you been seeing the ratings? We are not only keeping our millennials, we're one of the few places millennials are moving to now, which is changing who we are. When I first came, it's how can we keep our young people here? And now, fortunately, um, uh, how can we get them to move out of our house so they can have their own apartment? No. <laughs> That's a little bit of it, actually. <laughs> But, but we, are, we are in a very good, uh, good place there. Um, so I, I so appreciate, again, my relationship here. Thank you very much for uh, the plaque uh, that represents our friendship, Jerry. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you and, and the relationships that we've had here. Thank you very much. Jerry's right um, on many levels, and thank you for your leadership. Thank you for coming to Clay County often, participating, and you're always welcome back. Uh, the most important thing he said that I agree with is the people here are the greatest. You make the contributions, the investments, that we're able to do our jobs. Thanks again. With that, that concludes our luncheon. Uh, feel free to stop by and say hey to Jerry on their way out.